Welcome to the uh, DD Academy Info Evening, um, the last one this year. Um, I am uh, I am Martin, and um, I am the uh, CEO of the DD Foundation uh, that is organizing the DD Academy program. And also this year, I'm going to be one of the facilitators in the program uh, at uh, at Riga, Latvia. And um, Today, uh, you have come here to learn, hopefully, about our program, and we are here to tell you about it. Uh, but before that, we are going to very shortly cover uh, what is this DD before the DD Academy, uh, or before the Academy. Uh, but then we will go straight into the program uh, and explain what it is really about, uh, and what it is that you can learn from here, and uh, how it makes sense. Then we have an alumni interview. Uh, I was going to give you a, a bit of an insight into what it feels like to actually take part of the program and finish it, and what does it do with you uh, in your life. And in the end, we're going to have a Q&A, and you can ask uh, all of your questions that you have about the program or applying or whatever it is that you want to know. But also, I uh, strongly recommend you to write your questions in the uh, general chat. Uh, we have a screen here before us and we can see if you write something in the chat. Uh, and we, if the question is something that we are talking about at the moment, then we probably will reply to you during the event. And if it's not, then we'll take the question at the end at the Q&A time. So if uh, everyone is ready, then I think it's time to begin with the content and talk a little bit about what is DD. Um, DD is a non-profit foundation uh, in Estonia. Uh, we were founded already in 2002, so quite a few years ago. Uh, and for the past uh, six years, we've been doing this DD Academy program. And the program is free for all, all participants because uh, DD is a social enterprise earning uh, money through renting out space in our building. We are at the DD building right now in Tartu um, and, and uh, providing uh, finances, financing uh, for DD Academy. So everything in the program can be free for you. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all that I need to tell you about the uh, organization. Now, I think it's time to go into the program. And I'm going to give you a very short overview of the general idea of the program and then go into more depth, uh, depth uh, about certain aspects of the program that are practical and that makes, I think, we, we, we think make more sense uh, in explaining the program. So the general overview is very simple. Uh, the program is built around nine challenges. And these are very practical challenges, uh, like uh, giving a public speech or organizing an event. Um, and the rest of the program is meant to help you achieve these challenges. Um, so we have 12 weekends of live training sessions uh, where we do practical interactive exercises. And they are all meant to step-by-step -step prepare you for these nine challenges. And also there are some uh, tasks between the 12 weekends, uh, which are supposed to help you prepare for the challenges and also for the interactive things that we do during the weekends. So that's kind of the general overview of, of how the program works. But we think it's much easier to understand through specific examples. So I'm going to give you seven examples of the program. And all these seven are in the program and everyone who goes through the program also goes through all of these seven. So the first example is what I already said, uh, giving a public speech. And in the program, we know that pu public speaking is something that people are kind of afraid. Uh, so we take a step-by-step -step approach. So we're not just starting with going, going out and giving a speech, but we start in much, much smaller steps. We do small exercises in the safety of our uh, weekend sessions. And then step by step, we build up your courage, your skills, your knowledge about public speaking, and you can get to practice it before you do an actual big public speech in front of an audience that is um, 
well, basically scary for you. You get to choose your own venue for the for the speech, and you can choose your own kind of skill level what you like, what you want to do. That's one. Uh, another example is organizing an event, uh, and during the program in teams with other participants, you get to organize an event on a topic that is important to you, be it, for example, climate change or something about civil society or uh, mental health. Um, and this event is something that you figure out throughout the program. There is a process to that as well, where you step by step think about what you need to plan, how you do the steps, how you divide the work in your group learn uh, teamwork, learn how to organize a project and how in the end have uh, a big public event or a small public event, depending on what you want to do and get this experience so out of that. Thirdly, um, we have a module in the program where you learn about the methods of design thinking. Uh, design thinking is a way to analyze how to solve a certain problem, uh, be it for some people or for the whole society. Um, and we have concrete um, real life organizations, uh, mostly nonprofit organizations, who are asking our teams, our participants, uh, to figure out the problem that they have uh, and find the solution for that problem and then advise them how to solve this problem. So you will be kind of like uh, consultants uh, helping an organization figure out how to solve a problem in society in a better way. Fourth, um, in order to analyze societal problems, uh, which are complex, there are methods in the world that have been developed for that. And some of them are called systems thinking methods. So we teach how to take a very complex problem and take it into pieces and analyze these pieces and make sense of it to understand how one thing leads to the leads to another thing and leads to another thing and so if you want to solve a really big problem you need to kind of understand why the problem exists uh, and why how the problem as a system functions so you can find the best way to interrupt with that system to make a change or, or, or to create an entirely new system that works uh, in order to solve the problem. Then one of the uh, most favorite parts of our program for, for many people who take part is uh, our strengths model. Uh, and this module basically is built around a test uh, by uh, an international company called uh, Gallup. Uh, and this is a test, individual test that you take and you get results about what are your strengths. Um, and we build upon that because we believe that it's, it makes more sense to develop the things that you're good at instead of trying to fix things that you're not so good at. Um, so we find the strengths and throughout the year, we help you figure out what they mean uh, and how you can improve upon your strengths and become better at the things that you have the most potential at. Um, yeah. And then another one of the uh, favorites in our program is development partners, uh, which means that every participant in the program gets another participant with whom they share uh, what their goals are, uh, what they want to achieve, and also support each other in achieving these goals. Uh, and there are discussions that happen uh, throughout the year where uh, with this development partner, you discuss your issues and your um, challenges uh, in life or in work or whatever you're doing, uh, and hopefully find solutions with them and be, be of support to each other in the process. And the last one is uh, debating. Debating might seem similar to public speaking, but in reality, debating is much more about how to form an argument, uh, how to think about problems, how to present uh, your ideas about some problems. Um, so we, we, what debating means is that you not only think about how to speak about problems and, and, and issues and solutions, but also how to write about them and how to think about them. 
uh, and the baiting is a very uh, good way to kind of sharpen your uh, brain in uh, in analyzing problems and uh, describing solutions. Yeah, so these seven things are just some examples of what is happening in the program. There are actually many more things that are happening in the program. And we have all the modules and the courses on the DD Academy website. Hopefully most of you have already seen that. Uh, so if you have any questions about uh, the other things that you find on the website, then you can ask about these as well uh, today. Um, now I think it's time to invite in our alumni today uh, and ask a few questions from her. So I invite here uh, Katie to join me. <laughs> hey guys. And I will uh, stop uh, sharing the uh, slides. So I hope now you can see just us. Yeah, very good. Um, so I'm going to ask a few questions from Katie. And also, if you get some questions uh, uh, throughout this interview, then just again write it in the chat and I try to ask uh, from her as well. Um, okay, so before even we start talking about the program, I'm going to ask you about the situation before the program and when you were considering joining the program then did you have any doubts uh, and or concerns about the program and in the end why did you decide to join in the end mm -hmm. i think the only concern i had was um, because previously um, before starting td i was i had this phase where i was really interested in self-development and I thought I knew everything about uh, productivity and time management and uh, optimization and everything in this regard. So I think my only worry was that maybe I'm not really getting the maximum out of the um, uh, program because this is like a big part of TD. Mm -hmm. Like after I realized that my concerns weren't really valid, I mean, a lot of it I did already know, but uh, there was still a lot that was new to me as well. And I got to practice all of it. But uh, why I actually decided to join, I think um, it was because I, um, it was at a time in my life where I was actually looking for something very specific, like a group or organization where I could um, like be a part of a positive movement and create like this change in the world. And after finding Didi, I thought that um, it has like a very high possibility of being that thing. <laughs> So, uh, so I, it was like a natural move to me. I didn't really doubt the applying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when people are thinking about uh, applying to the Academy, they can see the website, they can listen to us here and the information evening. Uh, but it's really hard to give the kind of the picture of what it really feels like to be in the program. So I guess that's, that's my second question to you. When you actually joined the program and the program began, what did it feel like? What was what were your kind of first impressions of what is this program like? I think, um, if I remember correctly, my first impressions were um, it, kind of like uh, I found all of this very mind blowing. The structure was not what I was used to. It uh, completely like exceeded every expectation I had to a student organization. And um, the way that it's structured here is basically like uh, you have these intense sessions and in between these you have a lot of different breaks and energizers and uh, focus is not really on the theoretical part. Theory only covers the like main aspects that you need to know, but the focus is more on the um, practical side. So uh, discussions and the group works, individual works, uh, presentations. So after like uh, after my first weekend i just like i was asking myself like why do we not use the same structure everywhere <laughs> it works like so much better it's so much easier to get information and uh, like take initiative and all of this so so yeah i was pretty like what <laughs> good uh it sounds good to me uh, i hope it sounds good to you as well um now uh, there are a lot of parts in TD Academy. I already explained like seven things in the program and there are still many more. Um, but for you personally, what were the things in the program that you felt developed you the most? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, divided into four main parts, right? 
it's understanding the world, it's uh, developing democracy, developing yourself and changing the world. And I like the first three, I didn't really find too difficult, but the last one, uh, changing the world part, this was uh, like really difficult for me. I felt like the, during the whole part, I was way out of my comfort zone and <laughs> like uh, all of it, like going to the real world and uh, meeting real people doing like real stuff. Um, it was, um, it was pretty scary. So, um, so I feel like I de developed the most in this, in this part, like the public speech and the event and mm -hmm. uh, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically this is like we have these four courses in the whole program and changing the world is, is this one course where all the most kind of practical uh, world related stuff is like public speaking or organizing the events or leadership stuff and so on. Uh, yeah, so uh, good. Uh, but thinking now about, uh, you know, having went through the program and having done all these things, um, what have you mostly used from the program? What has uh, kind of sticked with you uh, after the program? Mm -hmm. Like the way I see it is basically that the DD gives you um, like um, a bunch of different problems and the different ways to look at these and uh, potential uh, so, uh, like solutions for these problems. And in parallel to this, we are also like um, working a lot with um, our strengths and getting to know ourselves and like finding the optimal way to uh, like how to give from ourselves or what to give. So I think like putting these two together, it just creates this like great ground from where to step into the world and start uh, creating change. So I think like this is my main takeaway probably because it also like adds a lot of confidence that okay i actually have value to bring to the table so mm -hmm. i think probably this mm -hmm. okay thank you um i'm going to ask my last question just in a moment so you know if you have questions to gaiti then now is your chance to start writing the questions in the chat um my last question to you is uh, who do you think the program is for? Uh, who would you recommend it to? Well, I really would want to recommend it to anybody, <laughs> like honestly. But um, if um, if I have to choose like a certain group or segment, then I think I would choose somebody similar to what I was at the stage. Um, so somebody who like sees that there are some problems in the world, but just doesn't know from where to start. It uh, might seem like a little bit too overwhelming or you don't like, you haven't like picked your battle yet. So I think like, uh, I see DDA as sort of this university of change making. So I think it, um, it really like this, if you, if you want to create the positive change or make this like a better place for other people and yourself, then probably this is uh, the place to start. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Uh, and we have our first question as well. Uh, the question is one of the questions that always arises. Um, uh, how many hours in a week uh, did you spend uh, on the program? If you can answer that. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty sure I spent much more than other people. I like I had this perfectionist side in me coming out. <laughs> so like, um, like uh, in addition to the weekends, I spent like uh, 12 hours uh, like during these two weeks as well. But I think other people spent less. Mm -hmm. And I did like 12 hours of like intense work uh, tracking. So I think uh, probably other people spent less, so I'm not like the best example of this, probably. <laughs> yeah, this is something that has been said about the program many times, uh, is that uh, it really depends on the person. Uh, so, and it also depends on like how much you want to get out of it. Uh, if you want to get really much out of it, you have to put more time into it. Uh, but the kind of the minimal threshold is quite low. Uh, you can get through the program and do the stuff with just like a few hours of work between the two uh, weekends. Um, but it really depends on what you want to get out of it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. so there's another question, I hope you can see it. 
Uh -huh. Okay, so what changes have I made in my life uh, after the program? It's only been a few months. <laughs> I haven't really had... <laughs> yes, she graduated last uh, spring uh, from DDA. Exactly, so <laughs> I would like to answer this like in some years. <laughs> but so far, I think it's... Um, uh, like before I was um, more lost, I didn't really know what to do. Now I have more of a direction, so... Uh, it's, I'm just at a, a time where I changed careers, right? So now I'm trying to find um, like an ethical, more ethical way to earn, still earn money and, <laughs> you know, live comfortably. So I think that's my main, um, main thing right now, other than just like normal that I'm much more mindful about my time and like more mindful about how I consume and this sort of like uh, more, I don't know, everyday decisions like my bigger decisions like career one this is like i think the main thing that i'm trying to or like that i have gotten to change after the program mm -hmm. thank you um any more questions for katie right now if there are no more questions right now then there will be a chance to ask in the end as well uh which is quite soon uh actually i, I ask you to stay here for the next part, and then uh, we'll see if there are any more questions. Um, I will put uh, back the slides as well. Uh, now, uh, the next part is about applying and how to do that. Um, basically, the timeline is, is like this. Uh, today, we are at the information evening. Uh, this is the last one, as I said. Uh, although you can uh, rewatch this uh, because it's being recorded as well, uh, as I hope we'll, hopefully everyone you, one of you heard when you're trying to call. Um, and our application deadline is uh, the 23rd of September, and we usually don't uh, postpone this deadline, so it's a, it's a kind of a hard deadline. Um, but and also we kind of uh, suggest doing the application a little bit earlier uh, because uh, it's uh, it's not a very long application but some of the questions really uh, kind of you need to kind of put time into thinking what the answer should be because we do have an interview after the applica after the uh, application form is filled but the main kind of uh, deciding on who is going to come into the program really does come from the applications. So we suggest everyone to put a little bit of time at least into thinking through what to answer uh, in the application form and maybe start at least a couple of days before the deadline. Um, and yes, after the uh, application, we do have interviews. Uh, the interviews are uh, group interviews and they are not focused on asking a bunch of questions from you. So they are more uh, group exercise uh, and group task uh, focused, uh, which means that there is no preparation for it. You just come as you are and, uh, and, and we'll give you a few tasks and then you can do this in, in, in a group. Uh, and the reason for that is because DD Academy is very interactive. We do a lot of things in groups. We do a lot of things in discussions. And this is the thing that we want to see in the interviews. Uh, mainly. And so uh, when after the interviews, uh, we, we, we pick the participants, uh, the maximum number of participants uh, in one program uh, in Sartu and in, in Riga uh, is both uh, 35 participants. So that is the maximum. Sometimes we do a little bit less. Sometimes we do, well, we never do more. Uh, uh, that's why it's called the maximum. Um, yeah, and, but in terms of the applying, uh, we are not looking for people who are the most active, the most uh, achieved people in the world. Uh, we are looking for people who want to start their journey in, in, in making change and finding their kind of way to do things in the world. So if you're considering applying, then we suggest you to do it. Uh, it probably makes sense. Now, the first weekend is happening on the 8th, uh, 8th of October until the 10th, so it's a three-day weekend, but all of the rest of the weekends, the other 11 then, uh, they are only two days, not three days. Um, and the weekends basically are such that the first day of the Saturday is usually a bit longer until like five, uh, maybe sometimes until six in the evening. Uh, and the, the Sunday is the shorter day, uh, which uh, ends around three or four sometimes. 
And so throughout the year, we have the weekends and then the last weekend happens in May. And the specific uh, dates are on our website and also in our application form. So you can check these out if they work for you. So this is the application system and the whole timeline. And I think this takes us to the last part of it. So I will again stop sharing and now the floor is all yours uh, for any kind of questions you have about the program or the application process or anything else you would like to know about TV Academy. And now I guess, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the question is about the first weekend, and if you can't uh, join that, then can you join the program? The short answer is yes, you can join the program. Uh, the longer answer is that the first weekend is the one is basically the most important weekend. Uh, it doesn't mean that in, in, not in, in terms of the content, the content is really spread out throughout the year, but in, in terms of getting to know all the participants, because there we will do a lot of that. Um, but if, uh, if you can't make it the first weekend, but you can make it all for most of the rest of the program, then yes, you can apply and you can be accepted to the program. Um, that the, okay. Another question is about how many people apply uh, but cannot get get in. Um, this really, really, really depends on the year. Uh, before the pandemic, uh, I, I think the answer was that we had like two people applying for one spot in the program. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, we have had a little bit less. Uh, I think. Uh, and especially like uh, in, in Riga, we had one amount of people applying in Tartu and the same, uh, a different one. Uh, but we ended up in, for example, in Tartu, with, uh, we started with uh, around 20 participants last year. So it was a bit more difficult. But even though even if we have less applicants than our maximum number, we still do the application process and we still uh, decide if the, if the person is a good fit uh, for the program and if the program is a good fit for the person. Uh, so it's it's still uh, we still choose participants. Um, is it possible to join through Zoom uh, some of the weekends? The answer to that question is no. Uh, there will be some weekends uh, in Riga, for example, that we have planned to be online through Zoom. But unless there are these specific weekends that are planned to be on Zoom, then the live sessions are not broadcasted in the internet, and you can't take part of them in Zoom. But uh, depending on the pandemic, uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the next question, obviously. Uh, if uh, the pandemic situation changes, and again, this here is a big difference between Estonia and Latvia. Uh, at the moment, as far as I know, the vaccination rates are quite different. Um, in Estonia, we are quite certain that all of the weekends are going to be in a physical room. Uh, all the participants have to be vaccinated or having uh, went through COVID themselves. Uh, in Latvia, we hope to be able to do the same. We hope we can make uh, most of the weekends uh, in, in a physical room. Uh, but if we can't do it, then we are prepared to do some of the weekends and some of the stuff uh, online and find a way to uh, do the rest in some other way. So we've, we've had now a year and a half, year, year and a half of experience of doing things digitally, at least some part. Uh, so we will find a way to do it, definitely. And uh, Katie, I guess, did, did you have any digital sessions as well? Uh, we after? did. And actually, they were like, if you normally consider like Zoom calls pretty boring and uh, not interactive, then these were like my best experiences of Zoom calls. They were like really fun and uh, uh, yeah, I really like them. So they weren't like normal Zoom calls. So it's, in my opinion, it's not really even like uh, anything to be a fear, like afraid of a fear of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, today's info evening is not very interactive, but uh, the sessions are, uh, even when they do, we do them, when we do them digitally, they're still very interactive and we have group work and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any questions that we haven't answered yet? Yeah. Not sure that many can join. Uh, I guess we have answered so far. Um, 
I think uh, now we're reaching the last moment to ask a question live on this Zoom call. If there are no more questions today, uh, then, uh, but you have questions after the information evening, then we are very open to answering every question. Uh, you can write to us through email, through Facebook chat, through Instagram chat, through whatever means you have available, we will be answering to you. Uh, and I guess we have reached the end of today's uh, information evening. Uh, uh, thank you all for joining. Oh, where did you get the idea to run the Academy? Well, that is a very good question. Thank you. Uh, we uh, have done the Academy now for six years in Estonia, and this is the third year in Riga. Uh, and before that, we did a lot of things as well with the organization since 2002. Uh, and the idea really came from we were trying to develop